Hey team, as soon as anyone starts discussing artificial intelligence, many automatically jump to thoughts about the end of the world. I want to disentangle the idea of AI from our chimpanzee baggage. Brain researcher John Dylan Haynes tested our conscious decision-making process. He stuck in a bunch of people in an MRI machine and asked them to push a button with either their right or their left hand. The interesting thing was he could predict a good 5 to 10 seconds in advance which hand they would push the button with. That's even before the person knew which hand they would use. If we take this one step further, researchers took people who'd have their corpus collapsus cut. This is the fiber optic cable connecting both sides of their brain to each other. You might already know this, but the left side of your body, your left eye, your left hand, your left foot, are all controlled by the right side of your brain. And so your right side of your body is controlled by your left side of your brain. What you might not know is in most people, the left side of their brain also controls their speech. So what researchers did with people who had their fiber optic cable cut was blindfold their right eye and show a picture telling their left side of their body to pick up a pen. Now keep in mind, this is not the side of the brain that can speak. When the researchers asked why they picked up the object, their answers were shocking. Now, if you or I did this experiment and we were asked why we picked up the object, our answer would be simple, because you asked me to. But when patients were asked why they picked up each object, they rationalized it. They said they wanted to play with it. They didn't say, because you told me, or I don't know, they made up the most plausible reason for why they did it. Now, the reason I talk about these two examples is just to question the idea of consciousness. How can people be consciously choosing which hand to press a button with when their choice is already decided 10 seconds before they choose? Just to drive this point home, when those patients were asked why did they pick up the pen, their minds constructed a very compelling argument for why they chose to do that. And they 100% believed it with conviction. So then they made a conscious decision to pick up that object because they wanted to play with it, even though the researchers know they had been told to. So the reason I bring this up with regards to AI is just to decouple the idea of AI needing consciousness before it's any good. For all we know, consciousness might just be an evolutionary way of rationalizing the outcome of complex algorithms inside our heads. So what is AI actually made of? First up, symbolists came from philosophy and computer science. They're most likely responsible for the 20 year AI winter we experience. That's because they believe that if only you could record all possible knowledge, you could codify that and program a computer to give you every single answer. Unfortunately, we now know that storing all knowledge would require a computer as big as the universe. In its most basic form, a simplest algorithm is an if this, then that will. Another powerful example is a decision tree, and hence why philosophy led to the creation of symbolists, because People like Socrates and Aristotle believed in the idea that you could actually codify all knowledge. And then when computers came out, the allure of that notion became even more powerful because it would have felt like, at the time, with a big enough computer, all knowledge could be stored. Now, however, we know that this is an impossible task. If you have a closed system or a domain where the knowledge is quite well understood, simplest AIs can be incredibly powerful. One of the best tools for simplest is inverse deduction. Deduction is going from the general to the specific. If round and bounces, it's a ball. Inverse deduction is simply the opposite of that, going from the specific to the general. If it's a ball, it must also be round and bouncy. In the fight against cancer, if the AI knows a treatment works on people whose cells divide in a particular way, and we know that the way a cell divides is dictated by their genes, then the AI can induct that this treatment will work on people with a particular gene. Next up, 
connectionist. Connectionist algorithms is probably the one I should have covered last. It's the one most modeled on our current understanding of how the brain works. It's the one most rooted in neuroscience. The way it's most commonly described is imagine you're looking at a picture. The first layer of the algorithm would say it, this is a complex mix of shapes and colors. The next layer would say there's a group of shapes which are eyes and a mouth. The next layer would say these eyes and mouths make up a human face. The final layer would say, hey, that face is your mouth. This common way of describing things hides a lot. What's really happening is at the beginning, there's an input, which is basically a bunch of pixels, and an output, which is identifying that it's your mouth. In between, there's a bunch of maths, which is very difficult to interpret. So if the outputs are wrong, and it's actually your sister and not your mum, you couldn't just go back and see which step made a mistake. This is why for years, connectionist algorithms were seen as not a good tool. Because when something went wrong, working out why was almost a bigger task than building an AI. With Symbolus, you could just go back through the decision tree and change the step to better fit the intended outcome. With connectionist, you can't do this. It wasn't until a clever monkey came up with the idea of back propagation, which basically tells the algorithm something went wrong, go back and fix yourself. Let me use cancer as an example to explain this nuance. Imagine you provide both connectionist and symbolist AIs with the relevant data about a cancer patient. These algorithms were designed to provide the right treatment to cure the patient. Now, this is a life or death situation. If both AIs suggest different treatments, how can you tell which one is right? You could ask the symbolist AI to provide the steps it took to come up with the treatment, and you could check whether it was right or wrong. Connectionist algorithms don't work that way. There's so many facets that come into that answer. It gets worse because in the face example, we know it's wrong because we can tell it's wrong. But if it's cancer, we won't know it didn't work until it's too late. And this is the biggest challenge with connectionist algorithms. Through those many layers, we don't know what's going on in them. And I guess it's the same with intuition. AlphaGo is probably the peak of where connectionist AIs are right now. It destroyed the world's best at the sport of Go. Yet, if you were to ask both the human and the AI, why they chose to place a piece where they did, both couldn't give you an accurate answer about their decision-making process. Now, evolutionary AI. It's basically what it sounds like, with deep roots in genetic and evolutionary biology. The best way I can describe it is like this. Imagine Mother Earth wanted to colonize the whole universe. After millions of years of trial and error, testing a bunch of different scenarios, she finally came up with a solution. Some of her solutions had local maxims like dolphins and lions, but humans, by chance, were the solution she found to make the thing that takes over the galaxy. There are a lot of ways to make an evolutionary algorithm, but basically it's a lot of trial and error mixed in with continuing the stuff that works, and a bit of randomness to ensure we don't hit local maxim. The pros of this method is it's really simple to implement. Basically get a computer and try a bunch of stuff until something works. The other good thing is it's really good at finding multiple solutions. Think about a computer simulation learning to walk. There's multiple solutions, six legs, four legs, two legs with wheels. Randomly trying things is one of the best methods of simulating creativity. The cons of that is that it can take a long time without clear direction. It took us billions of years to get here. And are we really going to make AI as inefficient as Mother Earth made us? If we think about solving cancer with an evolutionary AI, we can simulate millions of different scenarios and combinations in the lab. And often we'd probably test combinations that we might not have thought of before. And that's what makes evolutionary AI good. But wouldn't it be faster just to take deliberate steps Next up, we have Bayesian algorithms. Bayesians are rooted in statistics. When the weather person says it's a 20% chance of rain tomorrow, they're using Bayesian statistics. Imagine a decision tree, but rather than saying if round, it's a bore, Bayesian's tree would say if round, then it's 60% chance it's a bore. If also bounces, it's 80% chance it's a bore. Since you're using probability 
and not yes and no answers, these algorithms allow us to be more accurate. The cons of this is there needs to be prior probabilities. In other words, it needs existing data, which means it's very good with existing problems, but struggles with new ones. If it's a completely new scenario, Bayesian struggle to put accurate probabilities on things. With cancer, what it would excel at is the more common types of cancer, but it would struggle with the rare types. Without prior data, Bayesian's algorithms really struggle. It would basically be guessing. Now finally, I'll explain analogy algorithms. Now this school of thought came a lot from psychology. Basically, an algorithm for finding similar two things. Many people don't know this, but Facebook's facial recognition algorithm is basically an analogizer. Upload a new photo of your face and it compares it to other photos it has of you. If the face looks similar to existing faces of you, guesses it's you. It's simple, but extremely effective. Rather than having a computer model of what you look like, it just compares existing photos of you to new ones. That's it but it works. The pros of analogizers is it can generalize from very small data sets. If you tag one photo of you on Facebook, Facebook can start comparing your photos against others. It doesn't need a lot of photos to start to be accurate, but the cons of this is there's never a true black and white answer. And we see this with AIs pulling up photos of gorillas when people search for black people. Thinking about that, we could see how useful it would be for cancer treatments. The AI could analyze your DNA and suggest treatments that other people with similar DNA profiles have benefited from, which is awesome. Now, I just want to end this video of where the true future of AI algorithms are likely going. You look at Elon Musk's OpenAI and Google's latest computer vision project. They are more and more blurring the lines between those different schools of thoughts. They're combining different algorithms to improve the results. They're using connectionist algorithms that learn through an evolutionary process. And once they work out what works, they apply Bayesian rules to make it consistent. And that's what's really going to happen in the end. Things are going to get better and better by combining these different schools of thoughts. To be honest here, using the word AI to describe an algorithm is probably putting the wrong image in people's heads. And I guess this is the point. Once Google figures out how to combine the different algorithms to create an actual AI, we'll probably know it. And it will probably be too 